Hello everyone, my name is Irina and I'm very happy to meet you all through this online prep course. Um, today I'll be walking you through what the SAT math section is, what it is comprised of, what to expect, and how to come up with the basic strategy so we can actually tackle this down. You know, they usually say that well begun is half done, so no big pressure and we'll begin right away, okay? So the math section is comprised of two big sections. There's a no calculator section and there's a calculator section. It literally means for this particular section you need to put away your calculator and you'll be solving questions using your pencil and eraser and that's it. That's why they'll design the questions so that we won't be expected to involve two tedious calculations. And when the section ends and you move on to the next part, the calculator section, you pull out your calculator, you can leave it on your desk and you solve questions and utilize your calculator. But it doesn't mean that you need your calculator for every single question. You simply have the option to use it at your choice. Okay? So, when we look at the specifications, the no calculator section is the third section that pops up on your SAT test and it's comprised of 20 questions and you have an overall 25 minutes to solve them. So it equals out to be about a minute and about a minute and a half or 20 seconds per question. So you can see that you need to move relatively quickly. And then the next section for the calculator part, it has a little bit more, 30 questions for how long? 55 minutes. So we can see that, oh, it does involve a little bit more complicated concepts and the calculations involved itself. So the score structure, we can see that the total score for the SAT test itself is a maximum of 1600 and the math portion does actually comprise half of that. So the scale range is going to be the lowest being 200 and the highest, the perfect score is 800. And through our course, our goal is going to be above the 750 range and more of the perfect score. We can do it together, okay? So the topics included, we can see that four main categories can be actually divided for the test. There's an algebra concept, an arithmetic, the geometry portion, the data analysis, and statistics. Let me give you a little detail to it. The arithmetic portion is going to comprise questions that involve basic mathematical concepts and applying in them into a mathematical way. The algebra is going to involve variables and that's where all the graphing begins and involving all the real life scenarios and where you have to take the English text, transform that into an equation and actually solve it, right? I know. And the geometry portion is going to ask us to find areas, perimeters, surface areas, volumes and all that fun, right? We're using figures. Data analysis and statistics is going to present certain graphs and they'll ask us to analyze them and come up with some basic trends and all that fun stuff. So overall, there's a multiple choice section and a grid in portion. It simply means writing down the free response part. And we can see that for the no calculator part, there are going to be five grid in questions. And for the calculator part, there are going to be a total of eight grid in questions, the remaining part being all multiple choice using the given information and you just select one answer based on the four options they provide from A through D. There's only going to be one and only one answer, okay? So for the entire test, we can actually break it down into the format wise and I already briefly went over what questions precisely comprise each section. So 15 multiple choice, five grid in, 30 multiple choice and eight grid ins and we'll be solving total of 58 questions and combining the two sections for the no calc and calculator part, total of how many minutes? Good, 80 minutes. So I wanted to briefly go over how to actually mark in your answers for the free response part because I do receive a lot of questions from students. Well, let me give you two simple examples. First of all, how to actually bubble in a fraction form. And the second one is gridding in integers or decimals and all that. So we can see that when we involve an example value of nine over 16, nine being the numerator and 16 being the denominator, right? So there are always going to be four slots given in the free response part. We can see we have one, two, three, four boxes. So you just fill it in as it is starting from the numerator as we just read it. So it's going to be nine 
over 16. So starting with the left margin, you write 9, you bubble it in, there's going to be a dot representing the decimal or a slash for the fraction form. So you write a slash, you bubble it in, and there's a 1, 6, and that is how you would mark your fraction form. So for the second part, a decimal of 3.5. So there are two options. You can use the right margin or the left margin. Both do actually work. So if I wanted to start with my right margin, I would mark a 3.5, and you just bubble the respective forms. You can also start with the right, uh, left margin here. So if I had one, two, three, four boxes, you can fill out 3.5 as this, it works well, okay? So a question I do get is, what happens if I wanted a final value of, had a final value of one? How do you mark that down? You either start with the right margin, so you bubble in one, or you start with the left margin, you bubble it. Do not just randomly put it in the middle, okay? It's either left or either right. It can't be middle. And notice how there's a very crucial part incorporated here. You cannot grid in negative numbers. So whenever you solve a problem, especially for the free response part, and your final answer pops up to be this random negative number, oh, it means that we made a mistake, and that's actually the good case, right? So you can realize that you did something wrong, you just go back and try to calmly solve the question in a step-by-step -step process and just redo it. It's okay to redo the question, okay? So we can see that um, we can further break down the four main categories into an SAT version, the terms that they involve. So heart of algebra, it simply refers to the algebra concept wherein they involve variables to the first degree, second degree, simply means quadratic, third degree, cubic functions. And we can see that it actually comprises 33% of the entire test. It's actually the biggest, highest number. So we can see that, oh, there's going to be a really big emphasis for the first question category topic so we can selectively study this first right and then the second part included is problem solving and data analysis we went over this briefly right they present basic charts and graphs and they'll ask us to do some interpretation of it and it comprises a little less than the first topic about 29 percent of the entire test and notice how there are no zero no calculator questions. It means that whenever they do involve topics under this category, they'll ask us to calculate a particular complicated mathematical form, so a calculator would be necessary. And the third topic is Passport to Advanced Math, and this is just taking the first topic, and they're going to apply it to a little bit more detail. So they can ask for particular graphical representation of a polynomial function, or they may ask us to actually solve complicated forms that involve higher degrees or actually the exponent form. And the final part is the additional topics in math, and this simply refers to the imaginary number i and trig functions and all that geometry. And we can see that it is going to comprise about 10% of the entire test, and we can actually anticipate about half and half for each section. So three questions in the calculator part, and three questions for the no calc, and that's the total of 58, okay? So we can see that the emphasis is going to be the algebra topic. So I wanted to briefly go over how to actually study and tackle the SAT math portion. So the first two key points I wrote down is study each chapter. If you open your really big book for the Hacker's SAT version, we can see that we came up with all the basic concepts that are included for the math SAT test. So study each chapter. I want you to read through the basic material, solve the questions, and then review the material with me. That's where the online prep course takes place in. So you need to, you must solve them first and then go through them with me. Okay, it's going to be a review that we're going together. And then the practice part or practice test part. So the latter half of the book is going to comprise of total of eight tests. So you have to make sure that you time yourself. So get a stopwatch, you can use your phone, but make sure you put it in airplane mode, okay? So no one calls you or disrupts you. So time yourself, you would grade the questions, and then you can read briefly through the solutions, but that's where you watch the online course with me. 
and then review the material and I'll emphasize the key points and how to solve the questions more efficiently, more effectively, and some details and the common mistakes that students make, okay? So, how do you strive or how do I actually make an 800 pop up as my final score? So many students actually are targeting for the perfect score and I know that all you overachievers are ultimately trying to get this right. So based on my personal experience and what I've been teaching, I can see that the topic itself, the algebra, is the most important topic. As we saw previously, it comprises, do you guys remember, 33% of the entire test. So you need to practice algebra like a lot and we need to prioritize the concepts and go over the main chunk that pops up a lot majority of the test and make sure you know your weakness so for some students they may be weak for the trigonometry topic and some students may be weak for the particular diagram part or analyzing charts so know what you're good at and know what you need to improve and that way you can prepare that through the lessons that we will be going over or selectively solve questions involving the topic that you need more help on okay so i'm going to show you a basic slide of all the subcategories that fall under the main topics included in the SAT math section. For basic algebra, if you need more time, you can pause it at this point and grow through the topics together. And then you just jot down whichever you feel like, oh, I need to study that more. Just write it out, the keywords, okay? So basic algebra, it'll include four subcategories, the first one being linear functions and the second one, single variable equations, systems of linear equations. I cannot emphasize this that much. This is probably the most subtopic of the entire math section. Absolute values. And for advanced math, they'll involve simplifying polynomials, quadratic equations, dividing polynomials, exponential functions, notation, solving exponential functions and equations, systems of equations with nonlinear equations. And then the third topic includes subcategories of ratio proportions, scatter plots, and graphs, and data analysis, including probabilities, experimental interpretation using the line of best fit, right? Median mean mode, these are very important keywords, and the standard deviation. Additional topics, as I briefly mentioned, they will include geometry, concepts of lines, slopes, nonlinear functions, and other general geometry topics and they include circles, lines and angles, solid geometry, triangles and polygons and we can sometimes occasionally observe the three-dimensional diagrams as well. Trigonometry and the final part being complex numbers. So if you need to look through these once again just go back, rewind and pause it for a second and think about what to expect and try to memorize or try to remember what you learn in your courses in high school. So going back to this chart, we looked up to the third bullet point. So the fourth key I wanted to tell you guys was the utilization of your calculator. So when we go back to what the SAT math comprised of, the fourth section was a calculator section. And once again, you do not need to use your calculator for every single question, as long as you know what to do. And when you need to verify your answer, confirm your answer, or when you need to do complicated problems, for example, when they involve the division of a particular number or the multiplied form, that's when you selectively use your calculator and maybe sometimes you can factor out and look for the specific roots of a quadratic equation or the higher degree polynomial function. Okay, so make sure you're familiar with your calculator. And on the right side, this is for the perfect score. So always try to aim for the perfect score. When you're timing yourself solving practice questions, just think that you are ultimately striving for that 100%. And we should try to move quickly since this is a time constrained test and always leave some time to review. This simply means that per section, try to leave as much time as possible. And I think on average for the no calculator sections, students leave about 10 minutes for this entire section or even more. So I guess a minimum of 10 minutes is going to be appropriate. So try to double check your work and make sure you don't 
have it anything that's quite confusing. And for the calculator portion, students have about 12 minutes remaining. So this is what our goal is going to be. So hopefully through this brief introduction, you have a general grasp of what to do. And we're not going to be overwhelmed by the test itself. We can tackle this and it is very, very plausible to get a perfect score. As long as you keep pace with the lesson and practice a lot. You can even solve the questions twice after you go through all eight tests. You can go back and simply resolve them. Okay, so with the right motivation, we can and we will do this together. So hopefully we'll see each other real soon and I'll meet you guys for the first lesson. Thank you.